it's Nicole Spore for Simon Says Stamp, and this is the February edition of Making the Cut. Making the Cut is my monthly series here at Simon Says Stamp where we feature all things die cutting. Today we're going to be creating this flat wreath of love shaker card using stamps and dies from the Simon Says Stamp to the moon and back again releases. We are starting with the Tossed Hearts background stamp and some Hero Arts pebble cardstock. I love this background stamp. This is one of my favorites from the release, and I think it's going to create a beautiful tone on tone effect. For my first background panel, and I am going to go ahead and stamp this twice, I used the corner here, which is going to end up leaving me with a bit of an edge around the top and one side, the right side of this A2 sized panel. Now, while that would be okay if I wanted to trim my background down to four by five and a quarter, I really want my panel for the front of the card to be A2 sized. That's totally all right. I'm gonna use this piece for the inside of my shaker, which will be sized and scaled down just a tiny bit. So let's set that aside. Let's remove the corner piece and readjust where we're going to place our background panel and readjust our background stamp so that it fits the entire A2 sized background and stamp this again. I'm using Simon Says Stamp Stone Ink, which over the Hero Arts Pebble cardstock provides the most beautiful tone on tone neutral effect. I wanted my background to have some interest to it, but still make the star of the show the beautiful wreath of love, chickadee, and layered birdie dies. These are so amazing and so popular and really, really create the most adorable cards. After we have our background stamped, I'm going to do some layered stamping, which is one of my favorite effects. So we're going to go ahead and remove the tossed heart background, and I'm going to take the previously released UR background from Simon Says Stamp, place that in my Misty, and we are going to stamp over this tossed hearts with the text print using white pigment ink. Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink is what we're going to use here, and it's going to provide this beautiful, very soft background. As the stone ink that we used for Tossed Hearts is absorbed into the cardstock, it does lighten a bit from what you see here. And then the white pigment ink, of course, is very, very light. You can see that there at the top of the screen. I've also die cut the Chickadee, Layered Birdie, and Wreath of Love from 110 pound weight Nina Smooth White cardstock. I am using some Copic markers to add color to all of these white cardstock pieces. Those colors can be found in the description down below the video here on YouTube. I decided to go with a little bit more of a non-traditional color palette for what might be a love themed card. However, I turned mine into a friendship card. With a few simple adjustments, you can really turn this into anything. Change up the sentiment. It could be an anniversary card. It could be a wedding card, a love card, a birthday card, a Valentine's card, really anything you can think of. I'm a huge fan of cards that can uh, go for many different occasions. So I'm using some more muted colors to go with that more muted background. So the color here is coming from some blue greens that that fade more towards blue and then some blue greens that go more green, as well as some beautiful earth tones. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit closer so you can see the coloring. One of my favorite things to do with die cuts is to add color with some sort of coloring medium like Copic markers. This is really quick and easy. I know I've sped it up quite a bit here today. However, it doesn't take that much time. I literally colored all of these. I actually die cut everything, created my backgrounds, um, colored and put it together in under an hour. Um, to make the shaker and do a few finishing details, I finished those a little bit later. I would say this car took an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes from start to finish, which is pretty good. This is something you could also mass produce if you wanted to and create a whole set of, let's say, thank you cards or something similar. I think that would be really beautiful. 
I'm going to go around now and finish coloring anything that I haven't gotten to around the edge. I wanted my heart wreath to have a little bit more of that wood or grapevine wreath type look. So I went with some browns and then of course all of the greenery, uh, big blue green flowers, and then some little kind of purpley pinkish mauve maybe colored um, little flowers. And there is our wreath, which is going to be the focal point that we tuck our birdies around. So there's what our wreath is going to look like. I've got my friend greeting, and I'm just kind of playing around with the placement. You're going to see that change over time as I get my birds. I'm going to take my little white chickadee uh, before I've added color and also my layered birdie and just play around and see what kind of placement I like. For my chickadee, I am going to use lots of earth tones and warm gray tones. And I want to not over blend those colors at all. Whenever you are coloring an image and if you're struggling maybe to find the right colors, don't be afraid to uh, maybe do a search on the internet and see what you can come up with. And I am so sorry, I am little, I zoomed in and I realized I was a little too low. So let me move my chickadee up a little bit there. Um, so you'll notice I am not over blending at all. We're wanting a little bit more of that effect where you can see the texture of the feathers on the bird. And then there's great layering pieces. Both the chickadee and the layered birdie come as a single die that die cuts all of the pieces at once. This is amazing because some of the pieces are really small so you don't lose the die at all. And if you're going to do something like this where you die cut from a solid piece of cardstock and then add your color with watercolor or Copics or colored pencils or whatever the case may be, um, it really is much easier that way. In fact, some of my pieces didn't even pop out of the cardstock, so I went ahead and just colored them while they were um, in, still in there, and then I just pushed or popped them out of that cardstock piece with the tip of my tweezers. We're going to go ahead and assemble our chickadee. It's really easy. I don't know that it shows that great on camera, but there are some little very faint die lines on the largest chickadee piece itself, making it extremely easy to line up all of those uh, pieces for the face and the wing of your little bird. And even the beak, I did color the beak and then I layered the piece over it just in case there was any little piece that showed up. Now the eye will die cut from the chickadee. It didn't pop out, so I left it in place. And that's because I'm actually gonna add a dimensional eye with some Nouveau Crystal Drops here in a bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that as is for the moment. And we will come back to that at the end. I don't want to add that yet as I don't want to get my hand in it and smear it. I'm going to use my tweezers to help clamp and hold that in place while I color the layered birdie, which I ended up doing in a combination of the blue green and then the more neutral browns. I wanted my birds to both have a little bit different color and I absolutely love how this turned out. Uh, both of them are so much fun and I love that they're a little bit different than and I, I really wanted the colors of this card to kind of showcase that love feeling, I suppose, uh, but maybe have a little bit more of that winter vibe still. Um, we are still very much in the winter in most places here in the U.S. And so um, I tried to kind of balance between the floral spring is coming vibe and the winter uh, vibe or winter season that we're still in. So I'm just trying to color only the area of the underbelly of the bird that won't be covered by that blue layering piece. I love that this little guy has some legs. We're just going to color those in with our earth tone browns. There's also a beak and two layering pieces for the wing. I'm going to go ahead and assemble parts of this. So we're going to attach the legs and that layering piece that goes on top. So that can start drying. 
while I work on the wing pieces. So on the larger wing piece, I'm going to color kind of that bottom area again with my neutrals to match the rest of the bird. And then on the top layering piece, we'll go with our blues or the blue greens. And you can color your birds any color you choose. I also think they would be really darling, like in some pinks and reds for Valentine's Day. We'll finish assembling our little layered birdie, and then we are going to work on putting it all together, bringing all of those pieces together and finishing the design. So we've got the layered wing and we also have the beak. So there is our wing first. And again, there is a little slight die line in the body of the layered bird that helps you line that up exactly where it's supposed to go. And then the beak piece is very small. So I colored that while it was still in the larger piece of cardstock and then popped it out and placed it right there. Once we have a good idea of where everything is gonna go on the card, let's stamp our sentiment on the card front before we create the shaker. So the first thing we're gonna do is take four my amazing friend. This is a sentiment from the Friend Greetings stamp set. This is one of my favorites from the And Back Again release in January. This is just a fantastic sentiment. I love friendship type of greetings and they can be used for all kinds of cards. I've already used this many, many times. I want to make sure it's perfectly straight. So um, I'm using the grid on my Misty to make sure then I'm going to ink it up with VersaFine Onyx Black ink and stamp it right there in the center below where the wreath of love is going to go in my design. I felt like a few places were a little faded on the word friend or not as dark as I wanted them to be, so I re-inked it and stamped it again. Then I'm gonna glue my birdie in place to the wreath of love, clamp that in place and set it aside, and we're gonna take the Wreath of Love die and die cut that from this background where we just stamped our sentiment. That's going to create the window for our flat shaker card. I have really been loving flat shaker cards for uh, the less bulk type of look, but still the awesome shaker type um, interactive element that we all know and love. Once I have an idea of where my birds are gonna go, I like how that looks, I'm gonna take my die, line it up, I'll use a little repositionable tape to hold it in place, and then we're gonna run that through our die cutting machine. I'm gonna try to eyeball that as close to the center as possible. That looks pretty good. Leaves a little edge around the top leaves about the same distance on either side. And then again, we're just gonna take our Spellbinders Platinum die cutting machine and run that through. We'll discard the inside piece and we're actually gonna be using that other solid background that we stamped earlier that was a little imperfect and we're actually gonna trim that down to four by five and a quarter so it's a little bit smaller. We're gonna wrap a piece of leftover packaging from a Simon Says Stamp stamp around that, leaving one edge open. I used a nice strong adhesive on three sides, creating that envelope kind of effect. And then I'm taking confetti that I have in my stash. I believe all the hearts are honeybee stamps and then the star confetti is Lucy's Little Things. And we're just gonna fill our shaker with an assortment of goodies to fill it up so that it has all kinds of fun little shaker bits and bobs. So I usually put some in, I check it, see if I like how it looks. You can see I laid my frame over the top and I felt like we needed a little gold in there. I think it really uh, warms up the design. I'm gonna snip the corners at an angle, not too close because we wanna make sure the shaker bits stay inside, wrap that last side around and secure it. So here is our flat shaker and we're simply going to adhere our frame over the top. 
just like so. So I wanna make sure and take a nice strong adhesive and layer that over the top. And we're gonna inlay our frame. However, we're not gonna inlay the colored frame right inside. We're actually going to build that up with several layers of cardstock. I actually used three white die cut Wreath of Love layers and finished with the colored Wreath of Love on top of that. But let's go ahead and secure the shaker to the back of our frame first just like so. And then we're going to go ahead and adhere those white pieces. So the first one is inlaid exactly. And I'm going to take a little liquid glue, draw that on the back and place it right inside. Just like that. And then we'll stack two more on top and finish with our colored wreath of love. After each addition, I'm placing an acrylic block on top to help hold that nice and flat, making sure that each one is exactly right on top of the previous frame. This is going to give it a little bit more lift and a little bit more prominence and dimension on the forefront of our card. So that final layer has both the chickadee and the wreath of love since I already secured the chickadee to that because I wanted it kind of tucked uh, back behind a floral in front of the greenery kind of thing. So he's sitting in the wreath just like so. Then because this is slightly popped up, I am going to take some foam adhesive squares on parts of the layered birdie and we are going to attach the layered birdie with some foam adhesive so it sticks up. If you try to attach it directly with um, some other adhesive, it might kind of have a funny bump in it because of the dimension of the wreath. So I highly recommend a little foam adhesive here under parts of the bird. I only did the part that's on the card, not anything that overlaps the wreath. And then once we have that, We are going to finish with a little Nouveau Crystal Drops in Ebony Black, which is my absolute favorite for adding detail to the eye. And this is gonna make the eye slightly dimensional and really makes the face of those birds pop. So the card is beautiful like this, but I felt like we needed more hearts. I don't know about you guys, but I'm always down for more hearts. I took the Simon Says Stamp Nested Hearts Die Collection, and I'm using the two smallest dies from this. I've die cut the uh, this size, I'm at, let's call it the second two smallest die. I die cut two of those and three of the teeny tiny one. And we're gonna take our same Copic markers that we used throughout the rest of the design in the mauve, blue, green, and blue, green, blue, and blue, green, green, and we are going to color a scattering of hearts. So we're gonna end up having five of these little hearts throughout our card design. And this really, to me, finishes off the card beautifully. It adds to that lovish feel of the wreath of love and adds an additional pop of color and fills in some of the white space without completely covering all of the white space perfectly. And I'm simply going to use a little scrap of paper to protect parts of my, or to protect my cutting mat since I am really saturating these hearts to get a nice blend. In fact, I even went back over a couple of them here and there as needed. And we're simply going to continue doing this until all of the hearts are colored. We're gonna have a mauve and a blue in the upper left corner and a blue, green, and mauve in the lower right. I wanted to do an odd number of embellishments throughout. The hearts will all be popped up with foam adhesive, either a large or a small foam adhesive square. These are foam adhesive squares from Scrapbook Adhesives, which are my favorite. And we, you might have to slightly trim up the small foam adhesive square around the small heart if some of it sticks out. I just use some nice sharp Tim Holtz scissors to do that. And then they all have that nice little bit of dimension. 
Finally, we're going to finish the design with a scattering of some little gemstones. I picked the Honeybee Stamps Log Cabin Gemstones. They're teeny tiny self-adhesive gemstones and they are in the right color family for this particular card, kind of in some mauves and some blue-green type of colors. Um, even like a little bit of that, that stone gray that we used for our background. You can see them here on the screen. I'm using the tip of my Spellbinders tool-in-one to pick them up and pop those in place. We're going to embellish about three of the hearts with the gemstones and then add just a little scattering of a few extra right on the background. Just like so. Then we will adhere this entire panel to a white side fold card base from Simon Says Stamp. Just a reminder that Simon Says Stamp has pre-cut and scored card bases in all of the popular sizes and they are my absolute favorite. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for the February edition of Making the Cut. The supplies I use to create this card are listed and linked down in the description box below for your convenience. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Please be sure to visit the Simon Says Stamp blog for more information and we will see you next month. Thanks for watching. Thank you.